So the Cocoa Indian Tribe takes the long-term approach to forest management. We look at not only what is needed for the immediate need, but also what is needed for the long-term need. We manage with 80-year rotations. With this allows us to create a much more diverse stand overall and allows us to capture a lot more of the cultural elements that the tribe wishes like to have. We do manage those lands for revenue, but it's a sustainable revenue source. And we are hitting all of our benchmarks. When we look at that, that land and we look at the gifts that it gives us, we have to recognize that we're so interconnected, the people and the habitat that's needed for deer, elk, bear, all those things. And you have to have balance because it's about that healthy system that you need. And you need to be thoughtful and make sure you're not taking too much too. We're trying to do thinning so that way you have healthier forests. We're trying to make it to where we don't have a monoculture of just all Douglas firs, just all money-making trees, to where we have cultured significant trees. We also look at the native species and the species that we would have cultivated. We'll go out and map where those species are. We do pre and post harvest water quality testing. When you log, you lose tree cover, you lose canopy cover, and so that increases ground temperature. I've got four years now of pre-harvest data, and our goal is to be like, see, this is our management, and it's not having a negative effect. And so to be able to prove that or disprove that, that's, that's gonna be really cool. We like to specifically look at how an action is gonna impact wildlife and in what ways, and then how do we either avoid or mitigate that. Specifically, we use the trail cameras and the acoustic recorders to, uh, first off, we kind of inventory species, see what we've got. And so that's been uh, actually pretty cool. And you, you think you know, you know everything that's going on out there and you don't. <laughs> so the cameras really fill in a lot of gaps. Our goal, rather than making money, but of course, making money is a portion of it, but also creating a habitat that species can use. We have a lot of endangered species uh, near or around our, our lands, and so we want to make it to where they have habitat. We look at it as a, a holistic, uh, the water, the trees, the land, the soil. We try to look at all of it um, instead of just as a crop. It'll be nice someday to look back and to reflect on all the beneficial stuff that we have done to it to get it to be a healthy forest. But at the same time, I think that the process of doing it is also rewarding because every day we're making improvements on it. And so it's like one of those things where you don't see it so much instantly, but down the road, it's gonna be nice. And my plan is to have the forest be healthy for future generations and just to be able to talk to, when I get older anyways, talk to the younger people that are doing what I was doing, see how things are going then. It's not looking at the short-term gang for like the quick buck. You're looking at what is this action gonna reflect in the next generation? Now what will we leave them? 